Going live. Oh, look at that. Looks like it's working. With maybe problems? Do I have it set to the right time? Did I set it for what time today? It doesn't tell me anymore. I'm assuming it's right now. Woohoo! Queensland, Australia. Morning there, huh? That's interesting. Move this over. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll talk about hot sauce first, of course. I'll move myself all the way. Crimson tax dash. There we go. So we have been, we have purchased this. <laughs> it already says, I don't even know if I need to move myself. Er, but I've been waiting for the vlog to start here. As I've been saying, I'll start it out with hot sauce. And uh, I'm in my office because I forgot my laptop, so I didn't feel like going in the studio. I'm like, I don't have a way to communicate with people. So uh, I'm here. <laughs> and I have some fresh baked bread from the bakery covered with butter and text Cajun. Well, the stuff that's on the screen, I'm going to hold it here. So, hmm. I love this stuff. Hmm. Well, everyone, get here. There we go. <laughs> South Wales, Australia, Springfield, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri. Hmm. Awesome. Hmm. This is very good. I love all the stuff from uh, Bravado Spice and Seasoning Bundle. Their whole place is awesome. This jalapeno garlic one is amazing. So is this one. So that's, uh, we got some fresh bread from the bakery. Fresh bread, like fresh baked right from the bakery down the street with butter and Cajun seasoning is just amazing. So, yeah. Awesome. So I have somewhere to be. Um, I'm supposed to go somewhere with my wife later. So I only have about, I don't know, 30 or 40. Whenever she gets here, I guess I'll stop. But uh, they uh, do to do. We'll start over here. But the uh, whole uh, reason I can't be too late is because I have to go somewhere there. So I have a little bit of time between now and then. Now, last week, and uh, let me pull this up over here, and I'll drag it over there. Last week, I did it early in the morning. And uh, that's because, 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 where did my picture go? Oh, there we go. I was here. Uh, I had to run up north uh, where family I have that lives to go take care of some things. Um, but it was a fun road trip in the Tesla. So I, I love Tesla road trips. And uh, this is actually, I had to go visit my dad. This is his driveway. He lives in the middle of absolute nowhere. Um, so this, I had to go up there and charge the car and all that stuff. And that's the one thing that is a uh, issue with Tesla is the fact that you do have to charge it more when it's really cold out. <laughs> so when it's really cold, yes, uh, that can be an issue. So uh, road trip was fun. Road trip went well. But that's why I was uh, last week I had that road trip. This week I just got to go somewhere with my wife in the afternoon. And uh, driving up to from where I am in Detroit to northern Michigan is uh, quite a drive. It's about three and a half hours there each way. So, anyways, the car drives itself and it's pretty cool. Thank you, William Daughtery, for throwing some money. That is very helpful. Hello from Houston. It's amazing. Uh, my fireball says my Windows PC is uh, what my Windows PC is sending out. I want to start blocking everything. Well, here's the problem you're going to run into, William. As soon as you start blocking some of those things, including and specifically if you block any of the Windows telemetry stuff that's related to their licensing and activation, one, you'll not get updates. Two, you'll end up with a stupid message about Windows being not able to do the updates. Uh, because uh, it won't be licensed. So you'll actually create a bigger security problem for yourself as opposed to uh, letting Microsoft know. So Linux would be the way to go. That would definitely solve the problem. Now, this is our website. For those of you that haven't seen it, we've been slowly redoing our website and removing uh, things from it. So it's always, you know, a thing that is... Uh, 
a challenge. Always, it's a living thing. The website itself. So, uh, one of the things we made a decision to do when we've been winding down, and we just made it more official this year. Uh, we've been winding down any of the retail operations. They're just not in this particular region we're in, and our particular focus. We have not found an alignment. Um, you know, to, to say that we can make that a profitable part of my business. And I had someone say, "Well, you're just not good at it." I said, "That's fine. Whatever the reason." That it may be, if you say just because I'm just not good at retail, that's fine. We have just not found uh, a market that worked for us related to retail anymore. I did it for years. This is the we just made it very official by removing our Facebook and everything. We quit uh, any of the we kept a Facebook page. We removed everything related to retail from it. We removed it from our website. We changed our business uh, description and everything. We removed all the uh, links to things like you know uh, services we offer to the retail. So our websites have been, you know, business solutions only, ubiquity products, and hey, we still got some more tweaking to do over here. We actually don't have a lot on our website, just some, you know, the services we offer, uh, managed services, et cetera, and things like that. So, yeah, we're, it's just a matter of uh, changing some of the focus a little bit. And, um, you know, the retail was good, and I did it for a long time. I did it for a number of years, but we kind of said, okay, we're, it's just not, uh, it's not something we want to focus on right now. So, you know, it's the um, the whole thing is just as you evolve in business. It's just like I used to have a business doing, um, what do you call it? Uh, TV repair, VCR repair, electronics repair, kind of that um, under another name. And that one we got rid of as well. We, we had it under a different name. We merged it into the PC pickup brand. Uh, when I moved away from the shop that it was located and we changed locations, we merged it all into the computer store because I didn't see a future in it and I was right the TV repair business went down the tubes because no one really wanted to fix TVs. They just became cheaper to buy than to fix. So this is just another evolution for us of moving to uh, that. So PC pickup was just the brand we went by for our retail. So Lawrence Systems has existed since 2003, but PC pickup was the retail brand. And that's because when the company launched in 2000 and five or six is when I launched the brand. 2000, the beginning of 2006, I launched the brand PC pickup. Uh, we had a service that would go pick computers up for people. Because you got to think of back in 2006, one, we were picking up TVs and stuff. So, uh, oh, Micah gain, gain's too high? It might be. How's that? Is that better? There was an update. And every time there's an update, it, it goofs with the microphone. Kind of drives me nuts. Is that better? Hopefully that's better. Someone tell me if my sound is better. I'll wait. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but we uh, had people in text that would go around picking up TVs. So computers were hard to unplug and harder to do. So we were offering a kind of like a cur uh, it's a courier type service where we go pick them up. Obviously, with the majority of the retail uh, market moving to laptops, it's uh, become much less of a big deal over the years. But the branding was there. So PC Pickup was our brand for just a long time. Yeah, yep, heard the slurp. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I, I wanted to make a little extra mouth noises in it, you know. I wanted someone with mic someone with headset to just get angry really quick. <laughs> so anyways, um, so the PC pickup brand kind of came from there and then it worked. It was a very lucrative. We did very well with it for a number of years. I've always on the side had the Lawrence Technologies, but you know, like I said, you, you change and move on. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not we want to do anything on our Facebook page about this. Um, it's kind of been an I don't know. So do I make an announcement on there or uh, let's see. Is it this way? I'm trying to remember how to pull it up inside of here. We still, we still, we changed the name because it, uh, but we still got to change the graphic at the top. So I still got some cover art changes to do to get rid of it. Um, it still just generically says computer repair, but it's it's on my list to make some uh, changes in here. So it's uh, this is an evolution of things, but I figured I'd bring it up here, see what other people thought, if there were any thoughts on it. Um, <laughs> while we're here. Does anyone know who um, Jason Carter is from the show Babylon 5? 
So, and, and, and better trivia, why I'm bringing this up, when I had my PC pickup store for a few years, Jason uh, used to work for me. So um, it was part of a joke that we had earlier today about weird trivia, and maybe I should throw in some weird trivia about my company. And one of them is the fact that Jason Carter, the actor, uh, because of mutual friends we had, worked for my company answering phones for about a year. <laughs> doing all kinds of miscellaneous stuff. I mean, I think of it because he was early on the PC pickup days. He actually helped us. He's really handy, and he helped us remodel the building. He's really a brilliant actor, but he was unemployed at the time as an actor and helped us do this. It's like the most random piece of trivia um, I can come up with at the moment. Uh, so, <laughs> anyways... Uh, someone said in my quote was 160 for Cat 6. Yeah, Cat 6. Cat 6 is so cheap. We don't even run. I don't think we're getting any more Cat 5 anymore. So um, the Cat 5 is this, roughly when you're looking at it on, and we'll probably go to Amazon just to get some quick price comparisons, but uh, 5E. So do, 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 uh, bulk. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thousand. There we go. Bulk one thousand. Uh that says one hundred. Damn it. <laughs> Add another zero. UTP we're looking for. There we go. Like something brand good. So mono price, twenty four cat five E, riser eighty seven, uh versus we'll just change it over to cat six. And it's not substantially more. So there's 149. Amazon's some. So I did a video about how good Amazon's been, but we have to, we've seen a raise in prices for reasons unclear uh, on Amazon for some of their cabling. So we don't always. We actually found a vendor uh, that we buy it from, but it just varies because of that. So we uh, and one of them is the True Cable company. Um, they're they're getting better prices now if you buy right from True Cable. So they, they even reached out to me because of that video. So kind of give you an idea. So uh, 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 solid black. Less copper clad. You don't want copper clad. Never get copper clad. You want real stuff. Oh, mono price right here. 133. So it's more, but why is it showing so much more? It's usually less. We usually, oh, I think maybe the prices are going up right now. I don't know. But for the most part, the prices aren't substantially different. So you just go with Cat 6. We pretty much just run Cat 6 on there. And the cabling, when you look at your overall budget for cabling, uh, the money does, I mean, cable costs money, but when you build out a big project, all that other stuff on there, especially the labor, that's where a lot of your money goes. When you start calculating your labor costs, that is that is a bigger percentage of it. Because usually when you're running an office, with some exceptions, most of the runs are like, you know, let's say 30-foot average run across 100 runs. It's not the cable that adds up. It's all the labor it took to put the cable in the wall and get it all set up. That's where the majority of your costs end up being. So, yeah, that's uh, definitely something you consider when you're doing that. But we're so busy with the other stuff, just to kind of close the loop on it, we we really haven't had any, uh, it's with the retail stuff, like I said, we're just kind of moving, moving away from all that. That's kind of my thoughts on any of that stuff there. So that's it. That's my uh, announcement for my retail changes. Now we can go right to the errata of everything else. Uh, I was working on, I got to finish editing, and I'll probably just re-record it because I didn't like a few things I did in the video. Uh, I was going to do some clarifications, but it's going to be how we do the disaster recoveries and backups on here and how all this works. So... Um, 8 gig RAM, 250 gig SSD for PF Sense sounds plenty. Sounds like a waste, but it's your money, not mine. So you can overbuild a PF Sense machine all day long. I watch people do it like pretty frequently. Um, I don't. It, it's just one of those things when you go and look at the appliances on here for PF Sense. And I tell people like, if you want to build it yourself, go ahead. That's perfectly fine. Go build one of yours. But the uh, when you go down here and dig into one of these appliances. Here's something, level three forwarding, 18 gigs a second, 6.81 gigs on firewall, 1.28 gigs on IPsec, and 
This is a Intel Devtron Atom processor. With it does have eight gigs of RAM, so the eight gigs of RAM is not the part that you're really problem with. But you're you're not talking about something that's, it, you know, this is not the super incredible fast i7. So, uh, what's the difference between Lawrence Technology Systems and Lawrence or Lawrence Technology Services and Lawrence Systems? Lawrence Systems is easier to say. Uh, that's the short answer. Longer answer is Lawrence Technology Services is our legal business entity name. Uh, Lawrence Systems is just an easier way to say it because typing out Lawrence Technology Services in a domain, that's not easy. <laughs> so pretty much straight up, uh, no, it's not any more in depth than that. It's just easier to say lawrencesystems.com and it's way easier to email someone at lawrencesystems.com than it would be to type in Lawrence Technology Services. So uh, even though I called my company that, we decided the name should be um, simpler. That's all, no, no big deal there. Love the XG7100, but it's much slower than the PC I was using in terms of the GUI, but I do like the SFP Plus. Now, this is one thing, I mean, you will get with you build a faster machine, you are going to get a much faster UI interface. That's great. Is how much time do you spend in the UI? That's where the question comes in. So um, if you spend a lot of time in the UI, that matters. If you don't, then, you know, I go in the UI when I have something to do, but it's not where on a daily basis is much as we're doing stuff, I don't even log into the firewall. You know, I do it to get it all set up and configured and we move on, we move on to the next project. So um, that's about it. Actually, we have uh, PF Sense. We'll fire, what is this one tied to what networks? Uh, all right. Not, not a big deal. So we'll let this button boot up here. Now, this is an Intel i7 system. Does it say what process is there? Uh, it doesn't say. It will once we get into it. This is an Intel i7 system right here. So um, we can fire up PF Sense inside of here. This is the lab one. And this one goes fast because it's on an i7. And uh, where's the disk at on this one? Oh. It's stored on right here, so it's got a 10 gig connection to here with 10 gig connection. Matter of fact, uh, I rebuilt some of my lab stuff, so I got to do some new videos, but all my lab stuff is all connected at 10 gig now. So uh, it just makes doing the lab work a lot faster. So when I boot things up off the lab and all the different storage pools, um, all of them, and well, this one's disabled at the moment, uh, but all of them are connected at 10 gig, except for the local ones. And the local ones on here, this is, has MVME for local storage. So uh, I'm gonna do some new videos on all that. Uh, did we already talk about the 48 gigs, 1 gig, 10 gig, 240 gig, such a weaker tick? Yeah, that micro tick switch is pretty impressive for the price. Um, here's my problem. and. Uh, serve the home. They did a review of it, which is great. Um, I, I like that they did the review. Um, okay. uh, was it CRO? Yeah, KRO. So this is an impressive switch. I really like it. They did a review. I like everything about it. But people ask, are you going to buy one? I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> I don't have an, if we buy one of these for a client, sure, I'll review it, but they already did the review. They already did the write-up. It's a nice, like, this is a solid review. All the details you could ever want, plus a video. So you get all the write-up details and a video to go with it, and I like it. I, I would say this is a really good buy for the price. And that being said, I'm probably not going to buy one just to review because... I don't have a need for it. Like I don't, I have already 10 gig connectivity all throughout my office and my switch. So I'm not gonna just buy it to show it because I don't have anything. I have no more insight to add than they did over here at Serve the Home. That's why I tweeted it out when they released. I'm like, this is a great switch. That's what I have to say about it. Like there's not much more. Uh, what I do recommend, and even we do this, like if you want to, um, you get more into some of this equipment. And I I think a fair assessment, like they talked about the fact that it has dual power supplies, but they're not like removable. But the other side of that, at $499, this switch has some features comparable to, in terms of functionality wise, maybe not the software wise, that's the MikroTik interface, but um, this has 
a performance comparison of a switch that costs close to two grand, something from one of the other enterprise companies. But for $4.99, you can buy two of these. You can buy one and an entire other spare and set them up in a failover mode and duplicate your links, and away you go. Now you, for $1,000, have two switches in a redundant mode that would you know, uh, cost less than a single switch in single mode. So even if there is any potential reliability issues, but this has redundant power supplies, by the way, they just aren't hot swappable. But if something goes wrong, you could buy an entire another switch for still buying two of these less than you can buy for one of the, some of the other ones. So I'm really, in, um, I'm really impressed with some of the newer stuff that Mikrotix coming out with. And of course, the fact that it's got, um, all these SFP ports on it. So we got four SFP plus ports plus two QSFP 40 gig ports. So we have two 40 gig hookups, two um, or four 10 gig hookups there. So that's that's a nice setup there. I, I do like that. So definitely um, it's cool. But I already have that one Mikrotik switch I bought to talk about and it works. So if I ever want to play with and do some testing on a Mikrotik switch, I have one. And the thing about MakerTik, they all run the same software. So this runs the same switch software as the little one there. So that's cool. And, you know, so I I, I don't really, I'm probably not going to buy one of these. I know a few people have uh, asked about it. But I think you know, Serve the Home did a great job. And they've been reviewing a lot more stuff. i actually been uh, talking with the, um, the people there. They have some great reviews on hardware and things like that. So... Uh, does... Ubiquity still support channels for redundancy. I'm not sure what you mean, channels for redundancy. Probably have to get a little bit clearer on that of what you're asking. Channels for redundancy. But you can build, I mean, Ubiquity or Edge, you can build redundant switches and they support spanning trees. So you can create different uh, switch options like that. So, you know, something, something to think about. Anyways, well, what else was I gonna babble on about? <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot of stuff to hear. We've been looking at these new epics and things like that. The epic servers are awesome. Port channel aggregation. Yes, they do offer that. Yeah, multiple links to create a physical interface. Yeah, port channel aggregation. Um, I've never done any videos on it. I believe there's more features when you use Edge than there is Ubiquity. I'm trying to remember what the limitations are. We don't have a lot of those that we do. So, um, what's my opinion on PPOE ISPs? They're terrible. So I, I really dislike PPOE for ISP. It's a pain in the butt. So yeah, Ubiquity has a funny cheap 50-ish switch. They do. I seen it. I don't know if I'll review it or not. It's novel. Um, system, I think you mean System 76. He said System 75, but I bet Willie means System 76. And yes. I've actually reviewed some of their stuff. If you go to my channel, here we go. I've reviewed some of their stuff. I, I reviewed their Oryx Pro, and I'm obviously a fan of Pop OS. Um, so I, I do like their products. System76 makes some really nice products. I talk about them in the Oryx Pro video here. So definitely a cool thing. Have I done a dream machine in front of another Ubiquity Gateway dream machine? You can. You can double nat it if you want. So, I mean, it's an option. I, I don't know why you would, but you can. But I, you know what I love more than anything else, though? They have the best ordering system ever. So when you're on here, you're like, hey, look. So we can go AMD Threadripper, 12 cores, 24 cores. Uh, do we like the Walnut or Birch? Uh, Pop OS, yeah, we go with Pop OS for sure. We need 64 cores, right? 64. We need quad channel DDR4 256 gig because yes, we also need two terabyte NVMEs, some four terabyte NVMEs. Where's the biggest number we can get on here? 
28 terabyte SSDs. That sounds good. 28 terabyte SSDs. All right. Uh, first GPU. Uh, let's go right up to the top. What do we got here? All right. Second GPU. Hey, why not? Have more than one. Dual. We can't go single this way. We got to go dual. We need a mouse, a keyboard. Hey, matte black speakers? Come on. Three-year warranty? Why not? These guys are great. Shipping? Yep. Nope. Only $18,000. There we go. Look at this. That's a deal. So eighteen grand, you can build this system. They they do a great job at System76 of how they do things. Uh, there's a few people who have done some behind the scenes. My friend Jay from Learn Linux TV, he's actually been to System76 more than once to talk about the products they have up and coming. So they, they're... Overall, if you want a out-of-the-box turnkey, this just works great system, System76 is definitely a good way to go. They make a great product. <laughs> Still cheaper than an Apple Pro. So, yes, they definitely um, cheaper than Apple and I think better. But I, I prefer to build them myself, so uh, that's just my own taste. And uh, granted, I didn't build a, a thread ripper. I built this, but you know, you can't. I, I got no complaints. I mean, this is the uh, Ryzen 9 3900X. I am more than happy with this system. I mean, it it absolutely kills it for rendering. I am thrilled when I'm editing video. It is just it, it's butter. Matter of fact, I can open up the, I mean, from a video editing standpoint, let me open recent. Uh, what else do we have here? Is it this one? Yeah, this one I just did on jails. But I mean, I uh, let me bring it back into one single layout. Settings. Are we, where is this at? A load layout. One screen. There we go. So you guys can see it. So you usually have this split across several monitors. But I mean, look at how good this works. There is just no hesitation. It just works. It's just, and by the way, this is running across a 10 gig link and the free NAS is where all my videos are at. So, uh, and if I go to render something, it it's just, I could render it while we're doing all of this. It would pin all the cores and render perfectly fine and uh, have no problem left over for getting things done. So, yeah. Uh, what did it cost to build my system? There is a video and the price went down. But, yes, there's definitely a video on it. So, if you type in on my channel, let me, I'll pull it up so I can tell you to type in. Matter of fact, if you did this. Uh, It's my Ryzen 3900X one. I have a parts list in here for everything that went into this. So somewhere, yeah. Oh, there it is. Here's all the parts list on kit. So uh, can I drop this link in here? I can. There's a parts list of all the stuff that went into this. Here's all the pieces. So, I, well, this switch technically, because I am connected to the switch, I put it in here. Um, and it does have this 10 gig card in it. And I did use this board right here. And I am using this Western Digital uh, 500 gig MVME. But see, storage isn't a big deal to me because um, um, the storage isn't a big deal because I run everything on my free NAS. So all my videos uh, live here on FreeNAS. So you go to storage, pools. All the videos are actually LTS video work right here. Uh, currently, because I archive things out of here and just dump old data. So there's like 1.5 terabytes in here. And it ha it is absolutely f incredibly fast to write back and forth to this uh, drive over 10 gigs. You've seen how fast I can pull up videos. Granted, I'm not editing in 4K, but even 4K stuff is perfectly fine. Um, uh, there's nothing like tech supply direct here in Switzerland. Oh, yeah. 
that can be a challenge. Some countries do have that as a challenge, trying to get all that done, like getting things. I have a few people have messaged me wanting to know if they can buy it, get me to ship it because there's all kinds of rules or whatever. I don't know. America, that's that's my answer to I don't know. <laughs> I, I feel bad for you that it's harder to get hardware. Because I know a few people told me it's harder to get some of the NetGate products over directly over in some areas of Europe. Ah, so... Altered Carbon Season 2? Absolutely. Um, I plan to start watching it tonight, so that is my do list. Is uh, all my 10G ubiquity? Yes. Right now, I was using the MikroTik for a while. I just wanted to use it, um, but it, right now, everything is uh, everything's Unify. 100%. So let me move over here, here, here. Pull up the right account. There we go. So it's in the rack right here. Here's the 10 gig switch where everything connects to inside the office. And then here's the 10 gig lab switch. So this is 10 gig and I plug into this 10 gig right here. So we show the clients. There's Tom plugged into that one there. So 10 gig here to 10 gig here. The servers are all plugged in here. All the lab servers are plugged in here. And there's links between them that are 10 gig. There's a 10 gig link between them. So that's how we get all the 10 gig to the studio uh, and everything in there. And then we have another link that goes to the uh, rack, to the front of the office, to the studio switch, to um, the Gen 2 that's plugged in, which is actually in the shiny new Gen 2 is just part of the lab. But the lab's got a 10 gig in there. I, I 20 gig isn't going to help me, so I don't lag them together. I, I don't need to. We just have um, 10 gig connections between them. We just do 10 gig connections between each one of these switches with SFP plus. So SFP plus 10 gigs uh, works really well. The uh, the distance between here, we actually have a Cat 6A between this this link right here, uh, link number 16 from port 13 to port 16, is a uh, 10 gig connector. So. We go over here to devices. Pop this out. Right now, there's the XCPNG i7, and here's the 10 gig uplink to the back of the building. So <coughs> it's it's a pretty simple setup. It, I don't need a second 10 gig going in there. How simple of a setup? It's very simple. Close. Yeah, the alarm has to stay in here. So, yo, it's my son. He's hanging out here. It's a snow day. It snowed in Michigan. Oh, and by the way, if you put your hand up, the light, the light, so it doesn't hit me. It's there for those wondering what my office looks like. The light goes over, is in your face if you sit up. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, iperf. That's uh, definitely important because if we SSH to, uh, you know what? Let's even do it further. Let's let's fire up a virtual machine and do this. So if we go here, uh, where's this disk live? Go here, Debian on lab server. We'll boot this one up. Pizza day. No. The stream is very delayed. The stream is delayed? Very. Oh, you're watching the stream on your phone? No, I can see it right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. The stream is delayed from that. <laughs> All right. So this machine's here. It's clear. Whoops. And the stream is always delayed. And uh, what's the IP address? Uh, 3.142. So SSH root at 192.168.3.142. Uh, 
that sh actually this one I'll get five gigs out of this connection I think yeah that one will give me uh, about five gigs and then we go down here and cancel this now we're right back on my computer I forgot there's th there's a setting on that one that's wrong and it only gives me five gigs so we'll go back to my computer there we go so my computer loop through the studio and everything else you can see it gets 9.4 gigs a second so there you go so that that's how all that works so even the virtual machines that i spin up have 10 gigs so not just not only the servers but the vms inside the servers all have 10 gig connections now so it kind of gives you an idea of all that and it's nice once you have everything at 10 gig because it just when you want to do a backup or whatever it's just stupid fast matter of fact the server gets its data from over here the storage unit is over nfs and that's connected at 10 gig as well so this is actually does it tell me the ip address this is on a different network but it works quite well all right well i'm winding down and i don't have i mean i could babble about anything but uh i'm winding it down is there any questions before my wife comes to take me away because i'm assuming she hasn't messaged me yet but she will i, I can assure you she will message me and want to because we got to go somewhere so do to do to do, do oh Discussions on cost of living. That's definitely an issue. <laughs> Babble away. Uh, what's your max length? 10 gig? Oh, they're short. They're all about 30, 40 feet. So, why don't I use internal DNS? So, I don't understand the question. Well, I mean, I use PFSense as my DNS. So, I, I, does that count as internal DNS? Does that make sense? <laughs> Um, is this the site? Yes. This site is actually kind of cool because you're just talking about demographics. Um, we're in Southgate, Michigan. That's where we are. Uh, there we go. Michigan's fun because of the... Um, differences in you know slight geography differences massive differences in uh income and things like that is it berkeley what's the other city remove comparison let's start back out and add another one is it troy what is the place where oh um Say gross point. That's what I was looking for. So this is where it gets kind of interesting when you look at the way demographics work right here in Michigan. These are geographically reasonably close, but we go from a 51,000 median income home average over here in Southgate, Michigan versus a 132,000 household income averages. And the distance between these cities relatively close to each other <laughs> they're, they're they're i mean there's like a 15 mile 14 mile difference between them and this is also what drives the um this is what drives some of the comparisons when you're doing things like deciding where you want to put a retail store or other services because people who make on average a hundred and thirty two thousand dollars in their median household in income uh have more disposable income than people living at fifty-one thousand dollars a year, just more disposable incomes. There's certain factors and things like that. So uh, there's also a big difference. So it's weird. Is you have um, two and a half times the income, well, close to the two and a half times, but then you have uh, more than that when it comes to median property value. So they actually end up spending a lot more on property because you have a median property value of ninety-five thousand, but a median property value over here of three hundred thousand. So. It is really, um, it's really interesting when you're looking and digging into all these things. 
Oh, oh, why do you always navigate IP addresses to your system instead of host names for qualified domains? Uh, habit. We don't like putting names on stuff. We have certain things it is. So, oh, my face is covering the right side of the screen. Whoops. There we go. Hey, now I can talk more intelligently about something because you can see the numbers. <laughs> you could take my word for it that the, the, the median income in Gross Point Farms is 132000 and the median income in Southgate is here. Um, this is a cool site, though, if you ever want to do some comparisons inside the U.S. Uh, for things like that. So... Oh, uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> just trust me on this one here. Yeah. If, um... So for comparison, this is if we typed in, uh, there's us. Hey, look, there's my store. And we said directions, choose location. And we said... Gross Point Farms, 27 miles. And I bring it up because we did a bunch of projects out, um, out in these areas. So it's not very far, but we do have to go through Detroit when you're going there. But also when I was talking about us being by the river, um, remember the directions, that's the river. So the Detroit River and everything, and Canada is right here. So for those of you aren't familiar with where we are, we say Detroit, but this is actually what we mean. What we're just south of Detroit proper. So Detroit is actually right there, and we are right here on the water. So <laughs> So you said the housing prices are insane. Uh Mac Telecom Networks. I don't know where there is for you. And it does, it's, it is crazy because I've been looking at houses and it is wild to see the difference in pricing in houses. Um, this is Gros Eel, which also has a much higher median income average. This is an island. It's not private. It's public property, but it's got two little uh, things. So there's, there's really, it's kind of an exclusive line. It's got two bridges that are both swing bridges. So... Uh, yeah, they can, you can end up on this island, but there's a lot on the island, but it's, this is where, I wonder if we can do this. This is where uh, quite a few of the wealthier people live. This house is so crazy. I think I can find, um... Nineteen eighty South Gross. I'm way off topic, I'm sure. Oh. There's this one too. Here we go. This house is like this crazy eighties themes house. Look at this. This is so I don't think they let me go full screen. Oh, it does have a full screen option. Here we go. Look at this. Is that wild or what? <laughs> yeah, it's good for a zombie outbreak. This house was for sale. That's why there's all these pictures on there. It has a full salon and everything. So Gross Hill is like the, by us, where the rich people live. It's a neat looking house. Pretty wild. So it's dramatic here how... how the, the different housing and things like that is uh, definitely interesting here. This is a cool house, though. The other one is this house. This one just sold for $29 million. It's not even finished. Um, it's a, I've been watching this one be built a lot. This is over um, on East River Road, so 20638 East River. It's just a wild house. There's some big houses over on Gross Hill. It's They're pretty cool. I haven't seen this one. Now, I'll get started on real estate and wander around. The other one's just down here. I don't know how much Google has as far as pictures of it. 
But someone asked if I go fishing. Yeah, Miami Vice called for sure. <laughs> So, anyways, that's way off topic. We're way off to tech topics here. <laughs> what else did you want to know? Off topic. Wow. Uh, yeah, California is a whole other world, so... I've not spent time in Europe. I know it's a lot different over there. I seem to have a logo over my face now. That's interesting. I just noticed that in the live stream. I guess I'll move up a little bit. <laughs> what else was I going to look at? Uh, anyone want to buy my house? I'm going to be selling my house soon. Anyone want to come live in Michigan? <laughs> I got to... Uh, yeah, all all the roads are uh, surprised Michigan has roads. Michigan roads are notoriously bad. There is absolutely no doubt about that at all. So that's definitely a thing. Uh, I think it's something else. Let me pull up, talk about before I finish it up. I know it's babbling, waiting for my wife to get here. I know uh, this. This is what is on the studio table right now, and the reason it's on the studio table is because. Uh, we do a lot of these. Everyone asks, what do you do for cameras without Ubiquity? And it's see a Synology box over here, see the cameras here, and see the Netgear PoE. We like the Netgear PoEs. I might do a review of all this together if I got some time to mar uh, time tomorrow. So um, it's, it's going to be kind of a fun uh, video because there's so many questions about this specifically. Oh, you got candy for me? Yeah. So... Uh, we build these projects out and we built out quite a few of them with it and the uh we really like these cameras now the real league cameras are relatively inexpensive and they seem to work really well but <laughs> tesla needs a pothole dodging system more than anything else i didn't care for blue iris and the problem with blue iris i had one, it runs on Windows. Two, runs on Windows. Um, I have to still build a RAID array to store all the data. Synology makes it easy with really nice software. I review the Synology software, and you build the RAID array out. Matter of fact, one of the quotes we have is one of the large Synologies that has, I think, eight drives in it, one of the bigger ones, because of the amount of data that they need to have. So some of these companies... Um, you know, if I build a blue iris, I still got to get the hardware. I still got to put it together, and it's still got to run Windows. And Windows may have an update, and I just, eh, I don't trust Windows to update and not break things. Um, PTZ cameras. We've used some of the Real Link uh, PTZs as well, and they seem we've been really happy with them. So we've done a handful of installs with these Real Links, and they're they've been really solid. Now we have had. But it always happened very early on. We've had a couple go bad. And that's one of the reasons I've waited to do the videos on them. I wanted to make sure they had been installed for a while before I did the video. Because it's not the same doing a video about something that's out of the box. So like, how has it held up? What happens six months after the install? One year after the install, et cetera. And we're coming up on a long time um, that we installed these and we've seen some go bad, but they've always gone bad within the first two weeks. We haven't seen one go bad later. We've seen them go bad in the first two weeks. So uh, it seems pretty, you know, it, it's not been too problematic. Uh, and they're so inexpensive. We just keep spares. We're, we're starting to have more and more of these. We're like, we'll just grab one if one goes out and replace it for a client. Um, we don't think there's enough that it warrants, because of the larger installs we do, it doesn't warrant that we should switch brands just yet. Uh, but we just noticed that. I think we've had like three go bad. Um, I got to get the exact quantity we bought, but a lot more than three. So... <laughs> 
Um, and Hick visions are pretty good too. And that's a nice thing about when you set up a Synology, you can, we have some mix and match systems where we've used some of the real links. And I think we use some Hick visions as well, but you can mix the two of these together and it, it works perfectly fine. Yeah, we're not, we haven't been in unified cameras in a while. I, last year I did a couple of videos about why we don't do unified cameras. And most of the reasoning why is because Unify quit developing that software. They quit. So they went everything on protect. And until the Dream Machine Pro came out, and even then the Dream Machine Pro, even though it runs Protect, it's all single hard drive. There's simply no way to, um, for, for a client that needs some of these storage, this has eight terabyte drives in it. This has four eight terabyte drives. Not be just for redundancy, but for the storage capacity needed to make this work. So with that much storage needed, how do I get that with Unify? They don't have an option, so we can't even use them. Um, Hem High requires cameras. <laughs> the tracking, everything seems fine on the cameras. We really haven't had a problem. Yeah, the Synology, um, you can use such a variety of cameras. The only thing I don't like, uh, I, is the fact that you can't support um, the the Unify cameras with it. I kind of wish they, the, the Unify cameras support RTSP, but the RTSP stream importing in Synology just doesn't work well. A few people asked me about it. We played with it and said, this is a pain, um, and just kind of dropped it from there. What we did do was... Back, hey, we're, we're all the way back on topic. How'd that even happen? My Tesla's not here. Here's all the snow outside. Um, we did, for the hell of it, move everything over to protect because we wanted to try it again. Um, we have people, it seems to work okay. I don't, I do think it's like they keep developing, it's got more updates. It seems to be a little better than the whole um, other system, but it, I, I don't know. It's not amazing. Um, I, it's a nice interface, but the fact that it only has one hard drive in it, what am I supposed to do as far as if I had more cameras that we wanted on here? It's really not an option. So there's all their cable delivery there that we had in our scooter. Yeah, I guess people want to work here. Right now, we're not hiring at the very moment, so... I've heard okay things about, uh, I think it's X Protect someone told me about, so. Oh, is that a frozen garden hose? No, that's the, uh, okay, let me zoom in further. That's that's the uh, charger for my Tesla you're seeing right here. That looks like a garden hose. It's super windy out though. Look at the, the cable over here blowing. It is really windy outside right now. So this is the Tesla cam and it watches my Tesla charging and back. Can you see how windy it is from this side? Nah, there's if, there's some flags across the street, but they're out of view. They were really flapping in the breeze, so. And there's the front counter area. I thought you could zoom in. I guess you can't. It's not, at least not on this view. Yeah, whatever. Not that important. <laughs> yeah, we don't talk about the early access stuff because we don't know if it'll actually come out. So I know Unify has always got more stuff they're working on. Cool. If they do, if they do a good job of it, I hope so because it would it would actually allow us a path. But we have a drive. We have a customer that has six hard drives in a RAID array with a custom built server just to handle. Um, the uh just to handle the the kind of volume of data they have so they have you know like 30 something unified cameras and they need a lot of storage so uh, it kind of becomes a challenge to say cool they got a four drive system we need a real system to support some of these so um actually people ask me we want to get started 
the going through your standard A plus certs and things like that, the, at least the basics uh, are probably not a bad idea, but I'm also not an excellent person to ask about certifications. Um, Yes, first rule of early access is we don't talk about early access. But uh, yeah, going through and learning some basic, the the Network Plus and Computer Plus ones, not a bad idea. But as anyone who's, uh, well, at least people I talk to, because I didn't go to school myself, a lot of people I talk to that did go to school say, yeah, this is a real, they, they were helpful, but it's different when you get in the real world because it changes, excuse me, it changes so fast. So that's something to think about when you get into certifications is it's often a, um, way that companies filter people to make sure they have some experience, but uh, it can be a bit challenging. Does does FreeNAS support Ryzen CPUs? There is a um, will it FreeNAS? Yes, but. Uh, well, they have a hardware guide right here. Somewhere you can search through here. Uh, this search, oh, search is over here. But they do have support for it. Um, there are sometimes a certain issues with certain models. So you can go through here and find out if your particular one, what problems people are having, things like that. So, yeah, I so I'm really torn on this. I I completely agree with the uh, training problems with it, but unfortunately, this is where the real world and your ethics occasionally collide. And I am 100%, of course, in favor of the right to repair and things like that. And I hate that CompTIA is supporting it, but if you're someone going, I need a job, and the job requires this certification, I can not tell someone that you don't do this and forego getting a job because that'll prove to CompTIA and that employer who has no idea what you're talking about because it's just an HR checkbox requirement for them. It's sometimes where you, it, in as much as I dislike and everything else, um, y yeah. So it, I agree. If you can avoid getting it, awesome. But if you are in the um, world by which you need to get this to get a job, then yeah. Uh, we use Stripe for ACH. So that it's funny that they people talk about the Synology PSU and it's off of a video from like several years ago done by one YouTube person. We have literally, uh, we have literally never had one fail. And my understanding is they had a bad run of them several years ago, but it's tainted them uh, so badly because one person, big YouTube person, does video on it and everyone loses their mind about it. So do a collab with Network Chuck. I I think I emailed them once and I never heard back. I don't really – so it's kind of weird. Some YouTubers are um, – you can literally Google what I did. I, I literally Googled the fr will it free NAS and brings you right to the forum and then search for your hardware. Type in your hardware specifically, and uh, there's an entire thing on there. So uh, will it free NAS? That's what I Googled. <laughs> Anyways, uh, some YouTubers are harder to get a hold of than others, so uh, it's it's hit and miss. So let's see, what else was I wanted to do here? What was I rambling about? Uh, yeah, it really, like I said, the... Um, Mike, like Mike said, someone got their A plus twenty years ago. Server plus maybe ten years ago. You used to require A plus for first level tech. Now it's just show me what you know. In back when I started in the nineties, it was nothing but show you what you know. The the certifications back then were Novell certifications were the big thing. Um, you know, when I, in the early days, in that's what twenty twenty six. That'd be twenty six years ago, wouldn't it? Wow, I'm old. I am super old, I guess. Uh, 
Was there anything else before I wander off that I can think of that I wanted to share? Because something it seems like someone said something. I was trying to think of a video I did on that particular topic, but nope. So my wife just messaged me. So anyways, <laughs> I was trying to think of an old photo I had of some of that. So yeah, Novell guy too. Exactly. So it was, um, does they still have that? Wow. Certified Novell, your CNA. <laughs> That's funny. Do I have a recommended case that holds a lot of hard drives? No, none in particular. What brand of servers do we install most frequently? Uh, we install a whole lot of Dells. Um, that has been... Dells, so since we started working with Tech Supply Direct, we bought a lot of servers from them. And I will tell you, they're, you know... Uh, you build out some of these boxes, it it they're pretty outstanding um, for price, performance, and everything else. So there you go. There's 24 bay, two and a half inch um, R270. So 430 bucks. Uh, granted, there's nothing that much in it, but if you don't need much uh, processing power. Now, storage is a different topic. Storage gets expensive, but you can always buy your storage separate uh, if you're looking for the cheapest deal and buy them on there. But yeah. So there's a whole, you know, thing. Now, we do like, uh, I have a few super micros. We just rebuilt some clients' uh, stuff that all had super micros. So super micros are good. Um, they, they seem to do pretty decent stuff. But but, you know, the Dell ones are the used Dells are pretty good. We buy new Dells occasionally. We said a client order a brand new Dell server and everything else. But Dell wants a fortune for their hard drives. If you buy directly from Dell, when you go into the um, the uh, SAS SSDs, Dell wants a lot of money. Now they're they're expensive here too. Uh, SAS SSDs are just expensive, so we'll just leave it at that. If you go if you go SAS SSD, you're adding some money, um, and especially if you want. Some of the higher ones. Well, they don't have too many listed here. You can contact them for different options they have. They have a lot of different options for spinning rust. But if you want some uh, faster ones, actually, this is still a slower machine. This is a 720. You probably want something like the 730 or 630 because you want something with the 12 gig backplane. So. Right here, this this is a one U server, but now you're up to a faster backplane. So you get a SAS with a 12 gig backplane now. That's that's a nice bump. So you go for a 12 gig backplane along with some good 12 gig drives. So let's say you put you know eight 400 gig drives in there. It really depends on how much storage you need and what you're going to be doing with it. So uh, 960 gig SAS. Which ones are the SSDs? You get the idea. Yes, yeah, SAS SSDs, 960. There you go. There's a price for you. Eight, nine, sixty gig SAS SSDs. So. So anyways, do we get hit by spammers? There we go. Why wouldn't it let me? It's actually YouTube's... Uh, there we go, that got rid of the user. 
Anyways, I'm out of here, and uh, the spammers are here. So, wow, they're not easy to remove. They need just to instantly just delete this, ban this person from the channel. It's a, it's a too many clicks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, net buoy. Oh boy. So. Anyways, I am out of here. Uh, head over to the forums if you want to chat more. So. St Snowden worked at Dell. Uh, kind of. Read his book. It's there's so much more to the story that uh, I. If you want a great read, Snowden's book is great. It's a really interesting book, uh, just in general. It gives you a lot of insight into a, how a lot of things work on the back end. So I'll leave you with that. If you are looking for some good reading, um, definitely Snowden's book, top notch in terms of a lot of insight into the government and things like that. But as always, head over to the forums. You want to have a discussion? Um, if you email me uh, silly things like what do you think, you'll probably get those to. Deleted. So uh, for all those that sent me those emails, hey, Tom, what do you think of this? I, I, I don't know what, how to reply to a lot of those. So uh, posting in the forums, I reply to pretty much all those posts, except for ones that are – there's a couple people that posted some gibberish in the forums that I did reply and said, I don't know what you're asking, um, and they never replied again. So sometimes that haps, happens too. 174 of you here, can you smash that like button? I should have asked earlier, you know, before you're all logging off and not hearing me say it. But if you can, before you go, click the like button and help that YouTube algorithm. Let other people know, blah, 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 YouTube algorithm driven life and whatever that means. <laughs> but thank you all for joining me. I always appreciate it. Uh, always happy to see all of you. So, to. Do do do. Uh, yeah. Anyways, like Netwear two point five. Oh, Netgear, Netgear switches. Yes, I had them, and I had a photo featuring Netgear switches. Look, Netgear switches. We'll zoom into that. We'll be talking about these. These are the basic ones, but eh, if you like them, I got no problem with them. Uh, people think because I like Unify, I hate other products. That's not true in any measure at all. Um, so I'll throw that out there. Not, yeah, because I like something doesn't mean I hate the competitor. So, all right, we'll, we'll leave you with that. Just put that in your head. Just because someone likes one thing doesn't mean they hate a competitor of said thing. <laughs> all right, bye. Thanks.